Hello everybody one more time, my name is Alex Centeno with Mercados Interactive Partners here in the Research Triangle area. And um, today we have an exciting tutorial, it's been a while since last time and I'm going to try this time to do it really really fast. So one of those things that um, digital media artists like to do sometimes is to grade footage or uh, when you're doing video production of some sort and you're having to do the color grading yourself um, then of course you need to apply it um, from uh, tools such as Colorista, um, DaVinci Resolve uh, things that are of course used professionally but uh, you first of all not necessarily have access to those tools first of all and second um, you might not need to use them for your project it might be that the scope of your project is just like limited um, or third it might be that you're just like used to uh, the the whole workflow that you already have in Photoshop so maybe you want to do the grading Photoshop so um, having said that I don't want to make you think that uh, Photoshop is a great replacement of those professional tools because um, you know coloring is better done when you're uh, doing it with those uh, grading tools but um, if you must use Photoshop for your color grading then you know it can be done so let's take a look at um, a little bit of the of the workflow that you would follow to actually um, grade your footage in, in Photoshop. In this case I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop CC. Uh, in the past I've used CS6 and all the techniques uh, apply to the Creative Suite as well. Before we begin, let's take a look at our sponsor for today. Mercados is a strategic web studio located in the Research Triangle area in North Carolina. Our focus is to help businesses of all sizes make more money through the use of a strategic website design custom digital media development, and web marketing. For more information, you can contact us at 888-525-8117 or visit us on the web at Mercados.com. Mercados, creatively smart. All right, so here I am in Photoshop. One of the things that people have asked from previous tutorials is for me to start completely from scratch uh, so not even importing anything so that's what we're doing today so I'm gonna go to file open and I am grabbing a video in this case it's mp4 but of course uh, other kinds of videos uh, can be open in Photoshop as well uh, or other formats uh, the video I'm using here is a 1080p uh, video uh, or not even a 1080p uh, because technically it's HDV footage so uh, it's not even 1080p but uh, once you correct for aspect ratio and whatnot then you get pretty much a 1080p footage here um, so not something extremely exciting but uh, it will do for the purpose of our color grading tutorial so first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna notice that I have a video group here and the layer of uh, the video is right here at the bottom so first thing that you need to do is find a frame that allows you to do the main main color correction okay so this one looks pretty good uh, I have a good uh, range of all my tonal values so I have highlights and I have uh, dark areas so that's what I'm gonna be doing first so I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer you can see it's actually clipping this video layer um, and I have here the the pane with the properties so the first thing I'm gonna do is select my black point select the black point here and then uh, my white point and select something that should be white all right uh, I can also go to my gray and select something that should be gray just like that and that's pretty much it uh, in terms of the first color correction of course some of the videos that we've done in the past uh, go through selecting a threshold layer and doing the color correction like that but I'm not going to go into details of that because this is not really about uh, the first part which is color correction is more of the second part which is color grading uh, so uh, first step color correction you want to make sure that your black is black your white is white and your gray is gray 
first part. Second part, let's go ahead and add another curves layer. And in this one, we're just going to uh, more or less just create an S shape curve that is going to give us a little bit of that contrast that uh, for um, regular cameras you probably don't get the, the right contrast uh, out of the out of the box and, and most importantly sometimes it's on purpose that uh, shooting um, crews are going to set their cameras to be extremely flat so it's one of those things that most most of the time they want to do on purpose so increasing contrast is is one of those steps that you're going to be doing all the time um, so basically in this case I'm I'm using an S curve of course you you can do it a little bit more um, specifically by uh, bringing up a histogram and looking at what how much do you need to adjust so let me go ahead and do that so I'm gonna come here and get a histogram let's refresh that so as you can see it's blowing up a little bit of my highlights here but the tonal range is completely used so no need for uh, any crazy uh, extra applications let me just go ahead before I actually do this let me just go ahead and, and show you something if I was to move this like this uh, you can see a different combination of uh, tonal range uh, of um, tonal uh, composition in the range right uh, of course same thing would happen with the dark areas here if I do this see like the histogram of course is changing depending on the composition of my of my curves here so sometimes if you see something empty at the very top here so you can increase uh, the highlights and if you see some emptiness on the darker sides on this left side of the histogram then you can increase um, the shadow information so that you get more of a complete uh, tonal range but in this case of course it's pretty complete so I'm just gonna use my curves adjustment with an S-shaped curve to actually get a nice uh, increase of contrast and pretty much that's it so let's close this up excellent so now I have like those those two components now the part that is more of a you know of the secrets of digital media um, so I'm gonna come here and select my color balance adjustment layer all right and if you see here the tone is the first drop down here it has shadows midtones and highlights let's go ahead and start with the shadows so this is a technique very widely used in cinematography in color correction color grading uh, which is to move the shadows uh, towards a certain um, palette and to use the inverse of that palette to move the highlights towards that portion um, I don't think I'm making a lot of sense but let me just demonstrate it here so in the shadows I can move the shadows towards cyan and blue right I'm gonna add a little bit of green here as well I'm gonna do the same thing same thing with the midtones here a little bit less of course so a little bit of uh, blue green and cyan and then when I go to the highlights instead of going in that same direction which is adding cyan and blue I'm gonna move the highlights in the opposite direction which is yellow all right uh, so basically the technique is to create the most amount of contrast because it uh, makes it more appealing to the human eye so um, if you take a look at very famous movies just like Batman or uh, The Matrix, The Matrix actually uses a lot of green, um, but uh, for the most part you're going to see the highlights and the skin looking very orangey and the backgrounds and uh, all the things happening behind the scenes, right? Not the background itself, like things that are not the subject, being extremely blue. And so this is the technique that they're using so highlights I'm increasing the yellowish tint to it and then the shadows I'm actually doing the opposite and of course you can experiment with all sorts of different values but in my experience blue and yellow um, are the opposites that work best for grading footage you don't want to go crazy with um, you know 
making people red in their face or, or magenta and uh, and moving for example the background all, all the way to green um, it is a known fact definitely that when you're grading you want to make people look a little bit more yellow than magenta so the skin is more attractive when it looks more yellow than magenta uh, so I uh, hope that gives you a little bit of framing there uh, I'm kind of rambling a little bit so anyways um, so this is part of the secret right so a little bit of that highlights making sure that it's towards yellow shadows making sure that it's towards blue excellent we close this up um, and let me go ahead and get rid of this second layer that I had here okay so color balance there you can see the difference there on off on all right and um, final touches now final touch I would say let's go ahead and add a gradient um, in my gradients here I usually have a vignette that one looks good I'm gonna change the angle leave it in scale 100% and hit OK I want you to see here that it actually added it to the, to the end of my footage and that's not what I want what I want is to apply it to the whole footage right so I'm gonna move it there on top and then move it here so that I have it on top of uh, applying to the whole footage there you go and of course it's not working properly because I have linear from side to side so I'm gonna double click change the style from from linear to radial and of course that uh, takes care of the problem hit OK and then change the opacity according to taste in my opinion you don't want to go too crazy you don't want to leave the opacity being very very high uh, vignette is better when it's just like a tad you know it's not something very noticeable see it's just a little bit there 25 maybe 30 maybe a little bit more you don't want to go too crazy with vignette excellent final touch is the creation of course of the letterboxing which makes it more cinematic uh, this tip of course is not precisely grading but in my opinion it actually makes a difference in making your footage look like film um, or cinema style so let's go ahead and do that to finish so um, so how do we do this let me just go ahead and pull this document up that I have here and uh, I can show you here that the cinema aspect ratio is 2.35 to 1 uh, whereas the 1920 by 1080 is 69 so 16 to 9 and 2.35 to 1 so what we want to do is convert the 1080p footage which is the one that we have to 2.35 to 1 uh, what you would do is take um, 1920 uh, and then divide it by 2.35 to actually get what your height should be um, 817 and then uh, divide the difference by 2 so that you get how many pixels you need to come down so that you can make the letterboxing so 131-5 so I'm gonna come here select my um, select my ruler tool and from the very top here select 131.5 um, it doesn't have to be precise but you get the point 131.40 for example there it's kind of okay then I'm gonna do the same thing from the bottom here 131 there you go then I'm gonna pull from the ruler section here so that I create my guide there you go and then with that in mind I'm just going to select my um, my rectangle tool make sure that I have a fill of black and uh, making sure of course that it's a hundred percent black uh, and also that I have no stroke all right and then let's go ahead and create those letter boxes on both sides so first there second here at the bottom let's close this properties and uh, there you have it so if you can see here it's actually not applying to the whole footage so before I actually move this I'm gonna combine these two layers into one so select both of them right click 
merge the shapes into one that I'm gonna call letterbox and now I have only one layer here in the footage so I'm just gonna move it to the beginning all the way and drag to the end here there you go so now we have the whole thing from top to bottom excellent stuff so um, let's take a look at the final product and um, as you can see um, it looks so much better so much better than the beginning um, so let's go ahead and compare them both so that you can see the difference of both of them both of the footage before and after so excellent so I hope that this has been helpful as always if you have any comments questions you know you want to complain about life or whatnot just uh, use the comments box below uh, we welcome always your comments and uh, if you have any specific suggestions about what to do next if you have any questions about digital media production of any kind just uh, let us know also in the comments box below thank you so much for watching have a great day bye bye